Hi, I'm Keith McGuire, Mark's behind the camera, and today I'm going to paint me a quick bird. How's that sound? Um, the idea behind this is it's more of a study. Uh, we're going to just kind of paint it on white, and it's going to stay on white. It's going to, it's more of a, something you might do, it, it's fun. It, rather than 20 layers of paint and being real careful, this is more like a Japanese style watercolor. Whereas you kind of put the color down and move on. So that's what we're going to try. Anyway, Mark's prepared for failure, I know. If it doesn't work, I can always rewind and start again. Anyway, so... I'm going to begin by, once again, pulling the colors, some of the colors I'm going to need out. Uh, one of them, one or two of them. So I'm mixing up a little bit of uh, Naples yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre. It's uh, kind of opaque, uh, creamy color, real pretty. And I think it'll uh, do for the breast of this little um this little animal uh which happens to be a carolina chick uh carolina nuthatch um i love nuthatches i love um little birds that uh come to my feeder i hate all the other birds they're they're mean and won't visit me yeah keep looking bird ghetto apparently yeah i'll tell you what sometimes i'm a little disappointed when all the other people are talking about their cool cedar wax wings and uh evening grosbeaks. beaks you know, like i got seagulls and blackbirds yeah exactly all right so i've got a little brown a little burnt sienna and uh i am going to definitely be working with indigo i love indigo so i'm going to start with just because it'll be easy to start with i'm going to start with his eye so, the idea is, I am going to take off my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. That don't make no sense. Um, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wet the eye completely. Except for the little white dot that is the reflection. So, once I get the water in there, what I need it to do is actually kind of absorb into the paper a little bit, okay? Um, once it does that, I can drop my color in. It should just kind of bleed. Everywhere it needs to. Now, if you're curious on the brands that Keith uses uh, in this video, the Schminky paints, the Arches watercolor paper, the little Cornell brushes. Uh, there's a link in the description to places where you can purchase these items and see uh, or follow along exactly as Keith does with the exact same colors and materials. Uh, if you don't want to use our links, that's fine. You can use it as a checklist to support your local art center. Okay, um, what I did was I dropped my color in. I uh, then, after I let it set for just a second or two, I dropped a drop, I dropped a drop of water in. Um, what that does is, again, I push the paint to the edges of the eye, thus creating a nice, sharp, uh, clear um, outline of the eye. And it's like, kind of does the work for me. So... While that's drying, and uh, before I put another layer on, like I said, I, I just we're going to treat this more like a study rather than a uh, than a um, you know very formal painting. So I am working a dry brush. I want to work quick and clean, kind of treat it like maybe hey, it's a plain air, and by God, I'm. Got this little fella right in front of me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and paint him up real quick. So what I did was I dropped my uh, color. Okay. I gotta see where I gotta see where this uh 
I drop my uh, indigo in, and all I do is I'm just kind of pulling my paint along in the center of uh, where I'm, you know, what I'm painting, which is a couple black streaks that this little feller has. Um, and then once I kind of got it where I need it, I will then, I don't know, if you notice, I kind of dr drag my my brush stroke out from the center and create these kind of very fine little feathers and I think if my brush were a little newer they would uh, they'd be a little bit sharper but I can still get a pretty sharp uh, line with it now again I'm just going to I'm dropping a little water down the center again, just so I can get a very hard edge on my um, on my colors that I'm painting. So uh, there's a little bit of this, a couple more feathers kind of hanging out under here. So I'll go ahead and do that, um, and then oh yeah, okay that comes down. And there's a little bit of a kind of a puff of feathers right here at the top of his beak. And then I'm going to do the top of his beak. So, once again, to get a little bit of reflection on the beak, I'm going to drop a little bit of water. Oh, I'm sorry, not reflection. Uh, just to get a nice sharp edge on my bird nose. How's that? Um, for the bottom it's light. So I'm just going to come in with a just a much lighter uh, value and put a little color down and then to just make sure it kind of pops out a little bit from this white background I'm just going to drag a little bit of shadow up and under there. Okay. So again a little bit of water. Now, this is drying up. And I can see that uh, value is getting a little light. So I'm going to hurry up. Push uh, a little more good dark paint in there while it's still damp. And basically the paint's going to do the work for me. It's just going to follow along where the, you know, where it's already been painted. A little more of this. I feel like, uh, yeah, okay, that looks good. This would have a little bit of a few feathers coming down like this. All right. Okay. So, in the meantime, while that's drying up, I'm going to grab a little burnt sienna, which I already have, and a little bit of uh, the indigo, actually a lot of bit of... A ton of the indigo. Okay. And basically, I'm just going to take, I'm going to drag some color down. Notice how I leave, I'm using the side of my brush, not the tip. I'm just kind of dragging this thing down so I get some nice, uh, kind of light and dark paint. Basically, the light will represent uh, kind of a lichens or possibly uh, dried bark. Okay, so coming in under the bird here, just a little bit of shadow. Mark wants to see if I can actually do this in 10 minutes. Yep, so I'm not distracting you. Ah, okay. So I'm just kind of coming up and around. Like I said, I'm treating this more as a quick study rather than, you know, I'm going to worry about every little detail. Um, if you ever get a chance, you know, take a look at Japanese watercolors. They use a, a sumi brush, which is a pointed round brush, sort of like what I'm using. Uh, they tend to be a little softer than the, uh, the brushes that I use. 
and uh, but they, you know, you can get a good, good tip on them, good edge. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna take again a little bit of water on what I've painted. So this technique, I use it just for everything. It's great. So it pushes, pushes again the color up against the edges. So I start getting, you know, uh, variations in the bark. So I get different, uh, different little cuts and grooves. And what happens is later on, I then take these whatever I think is interesting, and I'll kind of. Um, Oh boy, um, I will kind of accent it a little more so that it stands out just a little bit more. All right, meanwhile, back to the bird. I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt sienna with the uh, indigo, and now I'm going to add a wee bit. Uh, well, that was a big bit of um, ultramarine blue. This is the uh, kind of the back feathers for this uh, bird. Now these are the fine little feathers kind of on their back. These are not flight feathers. Like I said, what I'm trying to do is just kind of represent this bird without it being um, absolutely, you know, perfect. So I'm lifting a little of the color back out again, and right behind this uh, little section of blue here is uh, uh, the beginning of uh, uh, some of the flight feathers. So once again, I'm going to pull a little bit of the indigo, tiny bit of the brown, Still got that blue, but what I'm going to do is start painting out these, uh, ooh, the beginning of these uh, flight feathers. Ah, I've already accidentally goobered, put my finger, or, you know, my hand into my paint. Try not to do that at home. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to get the indication of, of the feathers themselves. Now these are the uh, flight feathers back here, definitely. What we want to do with these, this is on a very much more individual basis. I don't want to, I want the uh, very defined line, okay, between each feather. As you can see it kind of rounds around so it starts out sort of like it, it rounds around. Uh, give me a term there Mark. What do you got? Anything? Nope. <sighs> rounds around. Yeah it's uh it's a rounded shape so curve. so the curve yeah the, the lines, the white lines, start out going at one curve, and then as it comes around, it curves at, you know, the opposite opposite way. I'm sure we can do something in editing, right, to make that all disappear. <laughs> no, I need to see if you can finish it in 10 minutes. Oh, all right. Um, can't we do that in editing, too? <laughs> we just keep... You, no. have, you have about three minutes... Are you serious? Fine. I just put the tail in real quick. That's, uh, I use the almost pure indigo, sort of like what I did at the front of the bird. Um, while I'm at it, I'm now going to take, and I'm going to take the bird's eye, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the little white dot, and then create kind of a semicircle of very dark, dark, okay, around the dot. Then I'm going to take the lower section with a dryish brush, damp though, 
I'm just gonna very gently kind of bleed that in. Now I'm gonna take a little water again and <laughs> I almost stuck it in my mouth. Um, people wonder why I have uh, uh, memory problems. Um, that's probably the reason. Anyway, um, at this point, I think I kind of, what I'm trying to do is lift a little of that color so it's a little darker on the top and a little lighter at the bottom. So it gives it, a, again, a roundish shape. All right, so getting down to um, our breast feathers. I'm going to add a, just a little bit of burnt sienna to our... Uh, Oh God, what Naples yellow and yellow ochre. So front of the bird's got a little bit of uh, right under the beak, it's white. So I'm just gonna come back a little bit along the side here. There's a little bit of white along the side. So I'm just gonna bring that in. And like I said, I'm, I'm just stroke, go for it. Ooh, I missed a one big feather, which I will put in in a minute, but I'm so close to being done now. No? No comments? I'm going to have to reset. Are you kidding? You got 30 seconds. Dang it. No, I can't. I can't do it in 30. Nope. But... Nope. It was an amicable... Try. Okay. So give me a second and we'll be right back. All right. So uh, give me a chance to let the uh, the uh, breast dry up a little bit so I can add some more value to it. All right. I am. Um, I have uh, now. I'm going to grab a little bit of the Naples yellow and a little bit of Carmen, which is a very kind of pinkish color very intense but mixing it with this uh, Naples yellow kind of brings it down to a kind of a oh, kind of a creamy pinkish which is for its feet can we cut coughs out of the I'll think about it okay I think you coughed while I was talking. I know. <laughs> and I would have gotten away with it, too. For those kids and that damn dog. All right. So, look how quick them feet went in. I'm going to let them dry, and then I'm going to put little notches in them. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to come up under his chin. And just kind of add a little little color under there so it doesn't look like uh, his face disappeared yeah all right so I got a little bit under there uh, I'm coming back real quick on the uh, beak dried up quite a bit so or lightened up don't forget the watercolors dry about 40% lighter so sometimes you're just gonna have to do it twice so, uh, this time though, I'm going to add, I'm going to leave just a little bit of, um, maybe a couple highlights or something in, on the top of that beak. Just a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to take a, just a little bit of color and I'm going to do kind of the little lip of the beak on the lower half. There we go. And now the eye. One more time because it kind of washed out. I'm just going to kind of come around like this. Right over top of the little white dot. And just a little bit of color. Or a little bit of water to soften it up just a hair. I'm going to take that dot down a little bit more. Okay. 
I'm gonna take a little bit of that color. All right, at this point, I'm gonna come in with a little more value now. And that's what you do, you, you know, you get your color in, you let it dry, you look at it, and you go, okay, I need a little more of this or that. And that's all we can do is, uh, you know, kind of wait for the paint to dry. So, again, I'm giving it right up near the, it appears right up near the, the wings and the body. There seems to be it's a little more value. So that's what I'm doing. A little more, well, a little more of the reddish hue. Right there. All right. Got one more little black feather. It's funny because it ain't a little one. It's actually fairly big. I'm just kind of separating really quick the the top feathers from the bottom. All right. So, they have the little uh, segments to their feet. Now, to me, I have to put a little line work in there to help represent the feathers. It's still a little damp back there, which I kind of like. All right, so that kind of softens that up a little bit. And sometimes I'll just soften the line work just a little bit, too. All right, this guy, he's about done. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of playing now. Just give him a little more detail. Um... He definitely needs a little more value. He doesn't. I'm sorry. The tree needs a little bit of value. Just a, maybe a little bit of shadow. Now what I'm doing is now I'm pushing the shadow into the bird. Eee, it's still wet right there. That's what happens when you're rushing. I'm just give them a little bit of a shadow. Look how long his feet a little bit. Maybe a few, few more little lines. That's basically it. You know, it's as much as you want to put into it. I think it's just fun to kind of get the impression of the bird without going absolutely nuts. Worrying about every feather. All right, am I done? If you say you are. Well, I am. So what? what was the final... 15? Uh, yeah, I would guess 15. Like All right. Okay. Not too bad. Okay, cool. So, this is what I tell the kids. 
you know, sign it. It's not done until you sign it. So I'll just put my little squiggly signature that nobody can read. Two more little lines. <laughs> You're cheating now. All right, let's call it quits right there. Anyway, just something a little fun, nothing too serious. But I'll tell you what, these little studies kind of make you, I don't know, a little more comfortable working. Not, not to. Uh, It doesn't always have to be so serious. It can be just fun. So, I'm done. Uh, Mark, any... Thanks for watching. Give this video a like. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button. Subscribe. 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 Keep an eye out on me. You know, keep me honest, okay? Uh, uh, I want your input. Leave us a comment if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions. Uh, we'd also love to see work that you're doing. And check out our old videos until something new comes out. Yeah. Hey, I found something else to do. Ooh. I'm just going to add it. There's a couple extra feathers hanging out there. All right, I'm done. Drop a little kitty at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Squirrel. Squirrel's next. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.